Hey, birders. Joe the Springboard Birder here for the DuPage Birding Club. This video is part of a series of videos on birding by ear or how you can identify birds without using binoculars. I hope it improves your birding skills and makes you a better birder. Now, in my past videos, I've concentrated on groups of birds, such as the thrushes or vireos, to help you separate them apart. I'm doing something a little bit different by covering a diverse group of birds that occurs in one habitat, and that is the grasslands of DuPage County. I thought that this would be a good way to cover them since grassland birds can be difficult to see and somewhat secretive, and it's important to know what they sound like. You will likely hear them in the grasslands before you see them. So let's get started on learning how to separate the grassland birds by ear. We're going to talk today about a group of birds that inhabit the grassland areas of DuPage County. There are several birds that require grasslands and open habitat for nesting. They all have a couple things in common, including nesting on the ground or in short grasses or shrubs near the ground. Many of the species require very large areas of grassland habitat in order for them to nest. So places like Springbrook Prairie, Green Valley, or Crash Rain Woods are great places to look for them. All of our grassland birds are summer residents and are generally uncommon if you take the county as a whole. However, in suitable habitats, some of the species can be quite common. Others that are harder to find include the sedge wren, Enzlo sparrow, and grasshopper sparrow. The grassland birds of DuPage County can be divided into two groups. First, there is a group of birds that only nest in grassland habitat, or what we would call obligate nesters. These are the true grassland species. Eastern meadowlark, bobolink, sedge wren, dixisol, and savannah, grasshopper, and henslow sparrow. Then there is another group of birds that also use grassland habitat, but they are also found in other areas such as shrublands, marshes, and even woodland edge. These birds also nest in grasslands and can sometimes be very common there. Those in that category include the red-winged blackbird, common yellowthroat, field sparrow, song sparrow, and American goldfinch. It will be important for you to recognize the songs of those birds as you visit grassland during your birding trips. Some grassland birds can be easily identified by their unique plumages, such as the eastern meadowlark and bobolink. Other grassland birds pose a greater challenge when you see them, such as the sparrows. And that's because they all have similar characteristics, such as brownish color, striped breasts, etc. Some of these birds are also skulkers, staying hidden in the dense grassland vegetation, which makes them difficult to see. If you learn how to identify grassland birds by their calls and songs, it will help you become a better birder in two ways. First, many times, the first evidence that there is a grassland bird around is that you hear it singing in the vegetation around you. If you know the song of the grassland birds, you will not only know that there is a bird there, but also what species it is simply by hearing its call or song. In addition, since each grassland bird has a unique song, knowing that song can help you make a positive idea of that little brown sparrow flitting back and forth through the grass. Birding by ear simply makes getting to the correct ID easier and faster. So let's move on to the birds. We will deal with the habitat generalists first, since they are likely to become more familiar to you, and you probably already know what they sound like. The first two birds, red-winged blackbird and common yellowthroat, are likely to be 
some of the most common birds you see in grassland habitat. The red wing, I'm sure, is familiar to all of you. And they sound like this. Conquery call of the male is pretty unique and present almost everywhere you go. Common yellow throat lives up to its name. It's very common in our area. The witchetty, witchetty, witchetty song should also be familiar to you. In some grasslands, common yellow throats can be the most common bird that you see. The next two species are more characteristic of shrubby grassland or shrubland communities, but are also found in our grasslands. Field sparrow is sometimes present with its characteristic upscale song. And everybody probably knows the goldfinch. It is common in our backyards, in our feeders, and, and you're probably familiar with their calls. So separating out those two in grasslands should not be a difficult for you. Our last generalist is the song sparrow. Song sparrows are pretty much everywhere, from our own backyards to the middle of a large prairie like Springbrook. They are very abundant in the county and sound like this. There can be a lot of variation in the song of the song sparrow. But once you get kind of the basic components of the song down, you should be able to always come up with a good count of song sparrows from our grasslands. Now let's move on to the grassland bird specialists. Our first bird is the eastern meadowlark. They are a large starling sized grassland bird with yellow breast, black V on the chest, and outer white tail feather. Meadowlarks have a loud whistled song. You can generally hear that song from a long distance away and is pretty unique for our grasslands. Meadowlarks also have a unique call. That rattle like call is unique, and so you can identify that sound as coming from a meadowlark. We generally only have eastern meadowlarks in DuPage County, but the western meadowlark does show up occasionally, and as you know, it looks pretty much the same as the eastern. 
However, each song is more melodious, with some additional notes mixed in. Since Eastern and Western metal arcs have only minor plumage differences, knowing the two songs is the best way to tell them apart from the field. Bobolinks are truly the characteristic species of our DuPage County grasslands. The males have a unique and colorful black and white plumage with cream color on the head and nape. Males like to congregate in groups. And they often give their songs on the wing. That bubbly chorus is characteristic and can be heard from long distances. In addition to the characteristic song, obelisks also have a unique call note that helps in their identification. Call note is given by both males and females. Once you learn it, it helps you to identify those sounds from the heavy grasses as those of the bobolink. Our next species is the dixissel. The dixissel is a grassland bird that can be somewhat erratic. Some years there are many around, and other years they are very scarce. Males are pretty colorful with yellow and black, so they are not difficult to separate visually. Their song is also characteristic. It is one of those birds where the bird's name mimics the song. Once you get that sound and cadence down, they are pretty easy to identify by ear. Dixissils prefer more weedy fields. They tend to arrive later in the spring compared to other grassland birds. The next species we'll talk about are the sparrows, two of which sound alike. But let's get started with the more unique sounding one first. The Henslow Sparrow. It has a very characteristic short song or call. Henslow's tend to be skulkers, so I often find them through their calls. As they say, so it goes to Henslow's. Getting to know that call is essential to finding Henslow sparrows in our grasslands. The savannah sparrow can be quite numerous in the right grassland habitat. The savannah is a striped sparrow, with usually a little splash of yellow above the eye. Sounds like this.
song can be quite quiet and insect like. You should note the ending. That variation at the end is a key difference in determining whether the call is that of a savanna or our next species, the grasshopper sparrow. Grasshopper sparrow sounds even more like an insect than the savanna. It is a high, thin, buzzy song that just fades out. You have to listen carefully and be fairly close to hear one. Many birders, particularly as they get older, have trouble hearing the song of the grasshopper sparrow. Our final grassland bird is the sedge wren. It is a small, warm colored wren of the grasslands that often nests in thick grasses in small groups. Here is its song. Sedge wrens are notoriously hard to see since they like to hunker down in the thick grass. But luckily, they sing quite a bit. And a lot of times, the males will just be singing constantly. So if you cannot see them, learn their song, you'll be able to identify them. Close, there are a couple key points regarding grassland bird song and birding by ear in grassland habitats. You can use songs and calls to identify most grassland birds, even if you cannot see them. Knowing the calls and songs also is useful in being able to identify that there are some grassland birds to look around for. Although most grassland birds have unique songs, there are two pairs of species where birders may get confused. First, grasshopper and savanna sparrows. They both have a high frequency buzzy song that can be difficult to hear. And they have the same form, an initial note or two followed by a drawn out trill. Key to correctly separating the two is at the end of the song. The Savannah song has a few more and different notes at the very end. This is a savanna song. Note the fuzzy note at the end that kind of goes down a tone. Compare that to the grasshopper sparrow. Grasshopper song just ends in a long fading trill. You should practice listening to both of those songs so that you can recognize the difference when you're in the field. The second pair where confusion might arise is the Dixissel and the Sedgren. 
Most species have a very similar form and cadence to their songs. It starts out with a note and then kind of ends in a trill. In this case, the sedren stays within the same note through the end of the song. And the dixiso goes up a bit at the end and seems to have a little faster trill. This is the Dixissel song. And you can compare that to the Sedren. That's another good pair of calls to spend some time on. Well, I hope you found the video useful and informative. And that hopefully it will help you with your bird finding and ID the next time you visit a grassland habitat. For the DuPage Birding Club, this is Joe, the Springbrook Birder. Good birding.